Hey guys, my name is Jeff Rojas and thanks for watching KISS Photo, where my job is to make photography easier for you. Now today we're going to discuss how to retouch images and still retain natural skin textures by using a technique called frequency separation. Now, frequency separation sounds extremely complicated, and most people do overcomplicate it, but don't let the name intimidate you. Frequency separation is simply a Photoshop technique used to separate a person's skin texture from their skin tones and blemishes onto separate layers. Now, the benefit of that is that you're able to retouch skin blemishes and still retain natural skin textures, so somebody doesn't look like a porcelain doll. Now, before we begin, I'd like to mention that I do have a free Photoshop action available for frequency separation in my store in the event you just don't feel like learning how to do it manually, which is fine. I use my frequency separation action all the time. Now, let's just jump straight into Photoshop with the portrait I've already specifically taken for this tutorial. Okay guys, now I'm in Photoshop and I wanna show you guys uh, more or less what we're looking for here. I want to remove the blemishes that are in his face. I don't wanna remove the pores that are in his face. I want to remove some of the blemishes he has here. I don't wanna remove hairs that are in there. Now, the technique that is frequency separation can easily be overused. I'm using it specifically to use it almost like a portrait client. Um, this isn't for an advertisement. I'm not looking for perfect, flawless skin. What I'm trying to do is remove some of the major blemishes that are in his face. The reason that a lot of my images in my portfolio look uh, realistic has to do with the, my retouching style. I don't go ahead and, and make someone's skin look porcelain smooth, but using this technique, you can if you want to. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and start our process. First thing you want to do is just go ahead and make two copies of the bottom background layer. We're going to go ahead and relabel them. Again, we're changing, uh, we're, we're making two independent layers. We're separating the details and the textures in one layer. We're going to go ahead and put the skin, the color, and the blemishes on a separate layer. So the bottom layer, we're going to go ahead and label color. I'm all for organization. It makes things easy. Top layer, we're going to go ahead and name texture. So. I'm going to show you a formula. I'm not going to teach you theory. So we're just going to go ahead and just jump into the process. I'm going to hide that texture layer. I'm going to go ahead and select the color layer. Go ahead and go up to filter. I'm going to go ahead and go down to blur, Gaussian blur. Okay, what we're going to go ahead and try to do here is blur the image enough so we don't have skin texture, but we still remain retain the structure of the photo itself. So what that means is, for my specific image, I can still see the nose, I can still see the darkness in the skin, I don't actually see pores, which is what I want. So 2.3 works for me. Your image may be different, it could be less, it could be more of a blur, depending on what you're trying to do. So let's go ahead and press OK. I'm going to go ahead and unhide the texture layer, let's go ahead and select the texture layer, go to, up to Image, Apply Image, and we're going to go ahead and select our layer. Make sure you're selecting the color layer, the bottom layer under, underneath. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change our blending mode to subtract. We're going to go ahead and switch scale to 2, offset to 128. Somebody a lot smarter than I am created this algorithm. I did not invent this. Just throwing that out there. Just go ahead and press OK. So the first thing we're going to notice is it looks like a matte gray layer, but if you pay attention and you zoom in, you're going to notice that all of my textures are retained on their own independent layer. Now if I go ahead, I'm going to hide the background layer so you can see the difference. I can look. I have a blurred layer. I have details. It's almost like running a high pass layer is what we're, we're doing here. Let's go ahead and press the uh, top layer, select the top layer, go ahead and switch the blending mode to linear light. What, the, what that's going to do is mix the two together on their own two independent layers. So it's going to look like we've never done anything. Now that whole process, again, I have a Photoshop action that will take care of that whole process for you so you don't have to do it manually ever again. Nonetheless, okay, so now my skin colors and blemishes are on their own independent layers. So any changes that I want to make to the blemishes, for example, this little pink area here, I can do so from the color layer. So let's go ahead and select the color layer. I want to go ahead and remove some of that blemishes that we have here. Now, you have a couple different options. I prefer the patch tool specifically because I can drag and drop uh, colors to my liking, uh, depending on what I'm trying to find. I do enjoy the algorithms of the healing brush. We'll leave that for a separate day. I'm going to go ahead and select the color um, that I want to remove. For the purposes of this, it's just this little tiny area that's here. And just drag over, and if you notice, I'm still retaining the pores that are underneath. All I'm doing is manipulating the colors of that specific area. Let's go ahead and delete some of this information, or rather, mask some of this information. Again, this little dark spot here, 
Okay, I'll keep his mole. I don't want to remove his mole. I want to remove some of the red spots that he has under his eyes. Okay. I want to remove this thing here. Let's scroll up. This area here, I want to go ahead and remove. And if you notice, I'm retaining the pores that he has in his skin, so it's not manipulating anything aside from the colors. Delete, not delete, mask. Okay. I'm gonna delete some of these little red areas that are here. By delete, I mean remove. Okay, remove some of those areas there. Okay. And remove this. Again, all I'm doing is I'm selecting areas that I don't want. I'm using the patch tool to essentially replace information from other areas that I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and go here. Okay. Now, you're going to have imperfections like this pimple here that are going to require you to manipulate the texture file. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in to show you guys the difference. I'm gonna go ahead and select that area. I'm going to try to replace it with another area. And if you notice right off the bat, the top pimple, the top head of that pimple still is inside my photograph. And that has to do with the fact that it's on my details layer. Here's what I can do. I can go ahead and go to my textures layer I can still keep my patch tool on there and just go ahead and select it and drag and drop somewhere else. And when, again, what that's done is I've selected this area that's here and just referenced information that's around it. Simple as that. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom out. Let's look at before and after so far. Okay, so I've retained a lot of the skin texture that he has here. I haven't manipulated any of the skin texture whatsoever. All of the skin texture has been kept in regards to this image. So go ahead and go to color. I want to remove this. This blemish that he has here. Oh, let's go back. Control undo is your best friend. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to teach you guys another quick trick while we're in here to make things a little easier for you. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and airbrush the skin, just slightly, nothing crazy. And this is how we do that. I'm gonna go ahead and put a brand new layer in between these two layers. I'm gonna go ahead and select a, a lighter color in that area that I want to go ahead and airbrush. And if you notice, what I'm doing is I'm smoothing out his skin tones just by airbrushing over it. Let's go ahead and look at that again. Okay, that will definitely be overboard. So what I like to do is, anytime I've done anything dramatic, you have an option. You can either control undo, or you can just lower the opacity. For the case of this, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the opacity. So let's see what I've done so far. Okay, I'm retaining the skin texture. You don't see anything jumping in regards to skin texture. All the skin texture has been retained. I can still see blemishes in, in his skin. I wanna go ahead and remove that. We're gonna go ahead and airbrush those out same way that we did before. Let's go ahead and use that eyedropper tool again. Okay, so let's look at what we've done on the airbrush layer. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just relabel this for you guys. Airbrush layer. Okay, so I've made my changes to blemishes on the color. My airbrush layer is on its own. It's, it has its own independent layer. I wanna smooth out some of the skin tones that he has in his nose. I don't wanna do that, do that on the color. I'm gonna do that under airbrush. So I wanna uh, select information that's not red. The pigment red is what I wanna remove, so I'm gonna go for a beige color. Okay, so let's look at that again. Okay, so I'm removing some of the red that he has in his nose. Again, I can see his pores. He has texture. What he doesn't have is blemishes. So let's look back and forth so far. His skin's in there. His texture's in there. Everything's been removed aside from his texture. I'm, key, I'm retaining color information. I'm retaining details. This photo isn't advertising perfect. It's meant for your average portrait client, for you to, for you to deliver to that average portrait client. It's not, my personal belief is to try to keep as much texture that's real as possible. So that's a brief introduction to frequency separation. It's a lot less complicated than everyone makes it. So that was about eight to 10 minutes of advanced portrait retouching I could have easily spent hours discussing. You're able to see the basic fundamentals in action and you probably noticed it really wasn't that complicated. Now, if you enjoyed my video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and feel free to comment below if you have any questions or any ideas for upcoming things you'd like to learn. Stay tuned until next Friday for episode two and have a great weekend.